I really wanted to start back when you were holding your daughter. And this is before you created the Gina Davis Institute on Gender and Media. You're holding your daughter and you're watching preschool TV shows. And I know a lot of us moms can relate to this, but you had a very specific observation that really was a catalyst for a lot of this. Right, right, exactly. So yeah, um, I uh, when she was about two, we sat down to watch her first preschool show. I was very excited. And immediately, remember the first thing we watched, I noticed that there were far more male characters than female characters in something made for little kids. And I thought, what? That's weird. And then I noticed it in other shows. And uh, I mean, some are some preschool shows are balanced, like the Teletubbies are balanced. I don't know if you can tell, but uh, yeah, and I saw it in kids movies and animated stuff. And, um, and it, it made me think, why are we doing, why would we be doing this? You know, why would we be showing kids from the beginning that boys are more important than girls? And so uh, I didn't intend to make it my life's mission or anything, but um I couldn't find anybody else in the industry who noticed or who thought the same thing. Everybody I talked to said, well, no, no, that's a thing of the past. I think that's been fixed. And uh, so then I thought, I better get the data. If I have the data, I could go directly to the people creating it and talk to them about it and show them in private, you know, this, this research. And uh, so that's, uh, so that's what we did. We got the biggest amount of research ever done on gender depictions. And um, so, uh, uh, and it proved to be the right, um, uh, the right tactic uh, to, to get people to, um, uh, to get people to uh, realize, you know, the, the change that needed to be made and uh, made them realize what the problem was. Uh, so, um, uh, that, that was, uh, that was kind of how it all started. And so over the years, you've probably researched more than just gender in children's television shows, but you've also looked at, um, gender, you know, age in movies, uh, race. Mm -hmm. And so can you tell us some of the observations and some of the disparity that you've noticed? Oh, and, and also LGBTQ. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I mean, we've, we've studied all this stuff backwards and forwards and um, uh, uh, representations for women as far as lead characters go uh, have, have seen uh, some pretty good uh, progress, um, improvement. Uh, and there's, there's been quite uh, quite significant progress as far as people of color, still not up to the percentage of the population, mm -hmm. but at least uh, definitely better. But um, areas like uh, uh, sexual identity and LGBTQ and, um, uh, and uh, people with disabilities, with 20% of the population has a physical or mental disability, and yet it's only about like 1% uh, on mm -hmm. screen. So um, they're, they're both very, very, very low. And so, uh, you know, we want to, uh, we want to try to bring the voices of uh, everybody in our, in our population uh, forward um, and, and basically reflect real life, you know, encourage films in front of and behind the camera to reflect the actual population, which is half female and very diverse. So I want to bring this to Bentonville. You decide to launch, I, and I want to, let me preface this. I love women that see something and they act. They huh. see something that they don't think is is right or or fair and, and they step into act. So you establish the Gina Davis Institute on Gender and Media, and then you decide, I'm, I'm, now I'm starting a film festival and I'm going to do it in Bentonville. So I have to hear the whole story behind this because I'm a Bentonville resident. I remember hearing a film festival years ago was coming to town and I thought, well, that's, that's not happening. So how did, how did you get a film festival created and then brought here to Bentonville? Well, it was, uh, it was chosen because it has so many movie theaters. <laughs> At the time, 
Not so much. Were no movie theaters at all when we started. Like, oh, this is perfect. No, but um, uh, well, Walmart is our founding sponsor and had a lot to do with this um, happening. So, um, and uh, you know, they recommended why don't we why don't we have it here and um, and and Benville is fantastic. You know, it, it is an incredible. Uh, a place and the, and the people and everything, but it's like a, a pocket of um, uh, culture, you know, in, in, in Bentonville with world-class museum and uh, all the fine dining and hotels and, and everything uh, besides being uh, the most adorable town anywhere. And, uh, you know, kind of a throwback to another uh, era uh, sort of, you know, we walk down and, and get an ice cream cone at the at the fountain store. So. Right outside the window here. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> oh, I love that place. Um, so, uh, so we'd had that going for it, you know, and the environs are so, are so beautiful. And uh, we've found also that um, one of the huge benefits is the, uh, the people who live there, you know, um, who have been so supportive, so incredibly supportive of what we do, and uh, uh, and happy about it, you know, and and uh, loving it. I if if I even get on the plane to go to uh, Northwest Arkansas, uh, people look at me like, <laughs> like I know where you're going. I know why you're here. I become a mascot of of uh, Mentonville, sort of. Well, you have, and and I'm sure you're a, an ambassador for Bentonville in a way. And I'm curious what you hear outside of Bentonville. I'm always curious of the perception of our our city um, beyond. What do you hear when people, you know, kind of associate you with Bentonville? Uh, to be honest, mostly people haven't heard of it. Uh, uh, <laughs> you know, in, in good in, secret, we just <laughs> or they've heard of it because of. Walmart. Mm -hmm. They know, oh, that's where Walmart has their headquarters. Mm -hmm. But um, uh, but when we introduce them to it, they can't believe it. You know, when uh, uh, you know, people first started coming to the festival and everything, they were like, "Oh my God, this is the perfect place," mm -hmm. and uh, and it really is. It's it's just fantastic. It's been super for us. Well, I want to go back to the festival, and I want to uh, you know, you've showcased a wide array of of filmmakers and films over the last few years. And I really wanna know, how do you choose those films? Um, how do people get involved and how, what are you looking for specifically? Right, so uh, so we have qualifiers to be able to be in the uh, festival. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, so uh, there, there, you need to have, I don't have to tell you everything about it, mm -hmm. but you have to be able to tell stories that um, uh, either have a, a female or a minority lead, female or minority director, writer, produ production company, uh, the cast is balanced and diverse, or the crew is balanced and diverse. Mm -hmm. And so um, you have to meet certain requirements to be, be able to be in the festival. But uh, yeah, so that's that's basically how, how it works. And you are the only festival that provide a great deal of support on the back end for winners. And I don't know if a lot of people here in Bentonville know that it's the only film festival that does that as far as I've read. Well, I don't know if we're the only one, but, mm -hmm. but yeah, we have a, a robust program to uh, try to help uh, filmmakers make their second movie. That, that's most of them. That's what they talk about is I managed to get my first movie made, but how will I ever get my second movie? So uh, we have various programs and, and year round um, activities to try to help that happen. Well, so the festivals this year is, it's kind of a dual track. You have the in-person is June 22nd through the 26th. Virtual is tw the June 22nd through the July 3rd. And I wanted to know what can Bentonville residents expect and how can we support, you know, engage with it, enjoy it? Right, right. Well, uh, everybody's been so great there. Um, and coming to uh, coming to the movies and walking around and seeing all the attractions and everything. So um, it's it's been wonderful. Um, you can uh, you know get a ticket to a movie. Uh, you can come to uh, uh, 
uh, an event, you know, watch a panel or something. Um, you can come to the outdoor theater, uh, which is now called the Gina Davis Outdoor Theater. I don't know why. Uh, <laughs> we like you here. That's why. Um, um, and uh, uh, oh, there's one. There's one. Uh, event that we have that people might love, which is called Gina and Friends. And uh, myself and maybe three or four other uh, female actors get together and we read scenes from movies that were originally all male characters. And so then we make it all female characters and see if that works too. And uh, it always works and it's very funny. It's really funny. People might like that. Um, we also have a volunteer program, uh, which people get involved with. Um, uh, we have a student internship uh, program this year, which had some great benefits. So um, uh, that's, that's it. I'll share links to both of those. Yeah, um, in this right. Let me ask you this. What do you consider? I have two more questions. What do you consider success with each festival and with your work? You know, what 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 is what constitutes success? Uh, well, uh, with my work, uh, it's so so much based on uh, data, and so it, it's it's actually something we can measure very well. Mm -hmm. um, and know what progress we're making. So that that's been uh, that's been very helpful. So we can actually see the areas we're improving and where we need to push more. Um, and the uh, the festival, we can see um, the improvement in how involved Hollywood is in uh, in it. And uh, because you know we want to support unique and interesting and uh, uh, independent filmmaking of course but also we want to impact the majors you know and uh you know the regular commercial movies to also have much uh, better representation in front of and behind the camera i want to ask one final question um movies are obviously a reflection of our reality but they're also a wonderful escape when we're watching so many things in the news these days i want to just ask if you could share with us a movie that you like that makes you feel uplifted Oh, uh, you know, the, the, the movie that has meant the most to me uh, recently is My Octopus Teacher. Uh, this is a documentary. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. I really recommend it. It's an amazing movie. I've watched it uh, a few times now because I just love it. <laughs> so we all have homework before the Bentonville Film Festival. We have to watch My Octopus Teacher. Yes. Gina Davis, thank you so much for joining us. It was so nice to see you and, and get to chat with you today. You too. Thank you. And it's a female octopus. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. Very on brand.